a Cantalot wedding, and by extension, Queen Chrysalis, are victims of bad writing. If you look in the description, you will find two videos. The first one will brutally murder the episodes in question, and the second one will soften the blow on the subject of why we've never heard of Cadence and Shining Armor beforehand. It'll only help, though, from an in-universe perspective, not a narrative. Yeah, they should have been introduced earlier, but on the other hand, we have a realistic explanation. Alright, due to the fact I do believe Chrysalis was meant to be shown an intelligent creature, I'm going to try to mend her as best I can. Some of this will require a little extra thought, and then you do immediately stop. A little bit of playing dummy is going to be required, unfortunately. Okay, so, first, to answer the question of why she didn't bring her entire army in, well, that could be a question of logistics. I mean, you know, one changeling getting in, okay, that's easy. Why we didn't try and get a small band, I don't know, but it is reasonable to say she would not get her entire army in. In fact, when you think about it, it's kind of like a, a Trojan horse metaphor. Essentially, Chrysalis is the Trojan horse. I will admit she was a pretty horrible Trojan horse. That's, that's one thing you're not going to be able to truly reconcile right, is why she didn't take the time to actually learn to be Cadence. She could have still missed Cadence being a full sitter, which would be completely reasonable. You're not necessarily going to know every detail about who you're impersonating, but manner, but knowing about her life currently, yeah. So, uh, another one is is the fact that Cadence and Twilight are still alive. Protected by the almighty powers of plot armor, and the fact that it's a little kid show and death is usually not encouraged, we have the issue that they are locked away. Now, there is a, a hand wave. It is the fact that, well, okay, we'll say you kill someone. What are you going to do with the body? Yes, cremation is possible. Cremation is a thing. You can turn someone to ash. Good luck getting a fire that hot. As I understand, it's very hot to be able to burn bone to ash. So, therefore, it is reasonable to say that locking them away is a better idea. Still wasn't perfect, noted by the fact they got out, but still... That one, again, getting back to the good old-fashioned plot armor. Now, on the problem of your changelings, not warriors, we have the issue that Chrysalis apparently had not intended on fighting Celestia. Personally, I would like to change this to did not intend to fight her fairly. I'm I'm not part of the crew that made any of the episodes, let alone this one, so therefore I wouldn't exactly be able to say this is canon, but I do wonder if Chrysalis had intended on assassinating Celestia. Because, you know, hey, there's a whole lot of jokes about how Luna was absent, but this was during the day. Luna has to stay up all night. There's a decent chance that Luna was, in fact, asleep, and, well, yeah, you know, you've got changelings attacking, noise, 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 but they live in Cantalot, the capital of Equestria. So, there's a decent chance her corridors are tucked far enough away she isn't disturbed. So, it makes sense that she wouldn't be involved. In fact, now this one I'm really not sure on. But I wonder, does Luna even live in Canterlot? I'm not sure if any of the source material directly says that. For all we know, she has her own separate castle, palace, however you want to put it, 
not very far away from Canterlot, but maybe she lives far enough away that she wouldn't have been able to notice. So yeah, there we go. It's probably still not perfect, and these are not the greatest points, but still, they do it enough to bring the episode back to life. Almost. There is still the issue, excuse me, of how the changelings are going to feed off these now hateful ponies, but there might be some method for them to bring out the love magically, or they might do some mundane manipulations. You know, show parents their children, and that might somehow allow the changelings to feed. Though I get the impression the love has to be directed at the changelings. So, yeah, that's a plot hole that most likely cannot be filled in unless we learn more about changelings. Alright, one of the interesting things I find about Chrysalis is her interactions with others. Towards ponies, and I would assume just about any other sentient race, for lack of a better way to put it, would be condescending, manipulative, horrible, you know, in general, evil. She views them as food and that's it. But to her fellow changelings, if you look in the comics, because, well, the episodes don't have jack all communications, they just exist as an army, but in the comics we actually get some back and forth and it turns out she apparently does really care about her people. I'd still say she's evil, in fact, it, this would be more of a case of lawful evil, because lawful evil is where you get into your bigotry, usually. Uh, you know, anybody is capable of bigotry, but that's something that is quite often found in lawful evil. So, yeah, towards the changelings, again, she's nice. Towards everyone else, they're food. Kind of like a vampire. If you would assume that vampires are rather okay with each other instead of the normal, uh, sorry, <laughs> portrayal of being at each other's throats all the time, then it's kind of like vampires, where they'll be cordial to each other, but mortals, unless you get a friend, kind of almost a pet, if you will, you will view them as food. You, you know that, for lack of a better way to put it, you know they're sentient. You probably even remember, yeah, I used to be immortal, but you're still more than willing to feed on them. I'd say it's a similar case, and it's one of the more interesting parts of her characterization. In the comic, Chrysalis does something that if you saw my somber movie, you will understand how much I deeply appreciate the fact she brutally murdered a cat in front of the scenes you know us. Although for some odd reason, they were no worse for the wear later on, but whatever. You can't have everything, the writers are only human. And it probably would have been difficult to try and in, in, have these horribly uh, psychologically mutilated, cute, adorable ponies. It would kind of kill their appeal. But... We still had some death. We also had a kidnapping, even though the kidnappees didn't seem to fare that badly. In fact, that was just glorious, the back and forth between Chrysalis and the CMC. And the great part is, she even threatens the CMC's life. Makes it rather obvious, they're going to die, or at least be exiled. And also, it was rather interesting that Sa- sorry. Chrysalis tried to take on Twilight as a subject. And, of course, by doing that, by removing the good in Twilight, she would have then fed on the main six in the CMC, the rest of the main six in the CMC, and nice steak raising, really good... You, you can tell they were, in the comic, they were trying to really unwind... You're giving me too much fuzziness. We need more death and doom. <laughs> Which is why I really like the comics. Even though, unfortunately, we, are, for the moment, are not doing any more with that. I wouldn't be surprised if they're trying to get more villains. Because, let's be honest, we killed Sombra. Chrysalis is locked away. I'm not sure we might have killed the Nightmare. I don't know. I don't know. So... Yeah, that is what I really like that the comic brought to the fore. The better characterization, 
also more characterization on just the changelings in of themselves, as well as, well, death. We truly actually managed something that would have been threatening even for just, you know, any comic. Still wouldn't have exactly been pants wetting, but still actually would have had some menace to it. In fact, you can tell even in the cartoon they were trying to be a bit... I don't want to say nightmare fuel, but they, they were trying to go in that direction as much as they could without making the censors and the moral guardians wake up. Shh, the conservatives are asleep, don't wake them up.